Hi there, I'm Lindsay Sparks, author of fantasy and sci-fi romance books that almost always include mythology with my own special twist. Welcome to my weekly Author's Notes podcast. Today is October 30th, Sunday, October 30th. Happy Halloween Eve. And I would love to share some of my reflections from this past week with you, although I now realize that when this goes live, it will be Halloween. So happy Halloween! (laughs) Um, Okay. I'm a little bit starting, I'm a little bit late in starting to record this, so I am going to try to make this one not too long and try not to go too long, so there's always a chance it could just result in me just talking really, really fast. So if that's what happens, I apologize. I will try to enunciate clearly. Um, I did want to let you know that I do have a couple deals and steals going on right now. So Inkwitch is currently free on all retailers. Yes, you can also get it by being a subscriber. Uh, and to my newsletter and gaining as- access to my subscriber library, my starter library. Um, but uh, for the next week, uh, you can also get it on all the major ebook retailers for free. Uh, so that's fun. Uh, and the link for that is in the show notes. And then also fun, Legacy of the Lost and Fate of the Fallen, the audiobooks are currently on sale, Legacy of the Lost. uh, Not everywhere, not on Audible. So this is on Apple, Chirp, Nook, and Spotify. Legacy of the Lost is 99 cents, and Fate of the Fallen is 4.99. So you can get the first two audiobooks in the Atlantis Legacy for six bucks. So that's a pretty good deal. And I mean, they're not short audiobooks, so um, definitely grab that if you like audio uh, and you have not listened to them yet. Dana does a great job of narrating. They're really fun. Um, Okay, yeah, so as I said, the starter library is always available for subscribers. You can get access to my ebooks and audiobooks, uh, all the first books, not all the first books, but a bunch of my first books in series. You can get an ebook and audio for free. Um, Okay, I do have a couple of announcements as well. Uh, So LP, Lindsay Pogue, and I are doing a cover reveal for World After tomorrow, which is today when this goes live, Monday, uh, Halloween. Uh, So definitely take a gander at our social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook for sure. Um, she'll probably post something on TikTok. I'll try to post something on TikTok for the first time in months and months. If I remember, um, I was planning on making a reel for Instagram. So if I make a reel for Instagram, I'll definitely post that video on TikTok as well. Um, also, uh, oh, but you guys, (laughs) so silly. I'll just show you the cover here too. (laughs) If you're on the video, you can see, um, the cover. Ooh, right here for world after. I don't know if this is going to show up as backwards. (laughs) It might. (laughs) So anyway, there's the cover of world after. Yay. And then we're going to do the cover reveal of, um, the Raven queen, I believe the following week, like the end of, so not this coming Friday, but the following Friday. So in two Fridays, I think, is when we're doing the cover reveal for The Raven Queen. Um, so uh, we are we did the covers for these two books for The Raven Queen and World After, uh, specifically for them to look like they were part of a series. However, World After looks a little bit different. So The Raven Queen books and book two and three are going to look more like cohesively a series, but like the font, the fonts are the same. Um, the kind of general aesthetic is the same. Um, but World After, because it's a prequel, we wanted it to look a little bit different. We also are redoing the ending series covers with the same designers. These are going to be the covers that are going to be on the 10th anniversary special editions, um, as well as just on the ebooks um, coming up. And those are also going to have the rebranded uh, fonts, um, especially for the um, title. Uh, so all of those are updated or being updated. Um, The four main books in the series are done, and now they're just working on um, Beginnings and World Before. So, yeah, lots of fun cover reveals coming up. Lots of fun cover reveals. And I still need to do the cover reveals for um, Atlantis Legacy. I have ordered the paperbacks. I wanted to wait until I received the paperbacks, kind of the same thing we're doing with World After, to actually do the cover reveal, kind of do a swap a on the camera. So um, keep an eye out for that. That's probably going to happen later this week and early next week that I'll be revealing all of those. Um, okay, so um, 
November 1st is the other announcement. November 1st is the uh, part one of the November Patreon drop for patrons or people who are interested in Patreon. Uh, on, November, on November 1st, I will be posting the seventh episode of season one of The Last Vampire Queen. This is a really steamy episode, so a good time to come in. Um, I mean, to be fair, pretty much every episode has a steamy scene. <laughs> so just so you know what you're getting into. It is by far the steamiest, spiciest thing I've ever written. But it's also so fun, and it really does have, like, a solid story. So some really great world building in there, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, I do like to build a complex, kind of semi-mystical world, so uh, that is going on in there. Uh, that's coming out on November 1st in a couple days. And then also the Patron's Choice Story, which this month is... Um, I know I wrote it down here. Uh, it's Haru's point of view when he meets Lex for the first time in ancient Egypt in Time Anomaly when she's introduced as Nguyen's wife. So that's going to be really fun. So far, uh, I think almost all, pretty much all, almost all of the patrons' choice stories have all been all alternate POVs. So either Haru's point of view, um, a Tum's point of view. Oh, man, last month's was a Tum's point of view when he was first observing Tarset, uh, when she arrived in ancient Egypt in Song of Scares and Fallen Stars. And oh my gosh, I loved writing that story. And it really influenced some of what I'm doing in Darkness Between the Stars because it revealed something that I had thought was true, but I hadn't actually figured out like all the details of it. And then I figured it out in his POV story. And then I have since worked that into the beginning of Darkness Between the Stars. So that worked out really fun. And um, also... Um, there's a couple, I think there's another Haru point of view. Uh, I can't remember what the other patron's choice stories have been, but they've been pretty great, pretty fun. I love all of them. And I think the thing that I love the most about them is there are things that I have, I wouldn't necessarily have written, but it's really exciting to write them knowing that people want to, are like, this is what I want to read. So I love, I love, love, love writing those. Okay, uh, there's not really many updates uh, in the art department of my business, um, other than for the AI art. Um, I have start last month. I started, so so I guess it doesn't count as like something I do every month yet. But last month I posted a poll in Patreon um, with a bunch of quotes from episode six of the Last Vampire Queen, and I had my patrons vote on which quote they wanted me to use in a prompt in Night Cafe, my preferred AI art generating platform. So I've been working on that for the past couple days. Um, and I'm really excited with the final pieces that I have to show my patrons. And um, it has been, it, maybe that I'll show the final piece, the actual final piece, not the all the other stuff. Um, on my social media because I want to start sharing some of the AI art on social media because some of it is so cool. So, um, but I'll probably have my patrons vote on which one is their favorite and then I'll touch it up by hand to finish it up and then I will share it, I believe, on social media. So that is what I have going on right now. Um, and we did get the copy edits back from our editor for The Raven Queen. We are just sitting on that for a moment while we finish up the other projects we're working on so we can get the copy edits done together and then pass it on to our proofreader. So everything is, I mean, we're going to be so, we're going to be done with that book and have it ready so early. So it's really kind of neat because it's not coming out till February for a bunch of logistical reasons. LP is going on vacation in January. We don't want to release a book on the holidays, like all kinds of stuff like that. So we're going to have lots of time for our advanced readers to get the books. Uh, we'll probably going to be sending out physical copies to advanced readers. So that's some fun stuff um, that I've never done before. And something that I really want to get into is sending out physical copies to influencers um, when the advanced copies are ready. So um, if you are, <laughs> if you are by chance, a um, Instagram um, or TikTok uh, bookstagram or book talk, um, personality, um, or influencer, uh, please let me know. 
and reach out to me, uh, preferably by email, but um, I'll keep an eye out on my Instagram messages, not on TikTok. Don't message me on TikTok. I won't check that. Um, the best place, honestly, the best place to get a hold of me is through the Discord server, which you can find a link to in the show notes. Because that I actually get push not- notifications on my phone. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, if you're an influencer, let me know. I will send you paperback copies of my books before they come out. So that's pretty fun. Um, and hopefully, or you, and then you will take, then you will take, and the agreement is that you would take pictures and post them on your platforms. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, what am I reading right now? I finished the Devil Wears Prada last week. I can't remember if I finished it, had already finished. I don't think I had already finished it by the time I recorded, um, Sparks Notes last week. Um, if you're curious in what I thought, uh, of the book, which is not entirely favorable, <laughs> my opinion, um, definitely check out the episode of No Shelf Control. Uh, LP and I recorded it last week and it goes live, uh, at the same time as this episode does. So by the time you are listening to this, unless you're watching it in my Facebook group, which I post immediately, uh, right after I do- I'm done editing it tonight. Um, but, uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast or on YouTube, then No Shelf Control, uh, the Devil Wears Prada episode of No Shelf Control, which is the most recent episode. I don't know what number it is. It's 60 something, I think. Um, is currently available as well. And it is definitely interesting. (laughs) Um, okay. What are we watching right now? Uh, we are watching Peripheral, uh, as the episodes release, although I think we are one episode behind now. Uh, and I really like that show a lot. It's on Amazon prime. We rented a couple movies. Um, we rented Samaritan with Sylvester Stallone and it was like a superhero kind of cheesy I mean, yeah, it was entertaining. I guessed like the twist immediately at the very beginning. So I felt very proud of myself about that. <laughs> My husband was like, huh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> I was like, really? Usually, usually he's really good with the twists. Uh, and then last night we watched Top Gun Maverick, which was really good. I didn't think it was like the best movie ever, which is what a lot of the hype said. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was entertaining. I had a good time watching it. I'm not going to watch it again. Um, so I thought it was really well done. (laughs) I mean, it was, I don't really care about fighter fighter planes and I thought it was entertaining. (laughs) So, um, okay. My high this week, uh, I feel like I'm on a good writing streak or good two week writing streak. So, um, yeah, I don't think I have had a day that I sat down to write a chapter that I did not finish a chapter. I maybe had like one day in the middle of the week that was a little bit of a struggle. Um, but I believe I'm past that hump and I'm especially having a great writing streak with the last vampire queen episode seven. <laughs> so <laughs> that stuff's always fun to write. <laughs> um, I would say that my obsession last week, uh, was, the last vampire queen playlist, which I listened to starting on Friday night. So obviously this wasn't my obsession for the whole week, but it's the one that's the freshest in my mind right now. So I started listening to that on Friday night to get into the headspace to write it on Saturday morning. So I did have a working weekend this weekend and I cannot emphasize how much the playlist thing helps me with writing in, um, I want to say like four, five different worlds right now. Uh, maybe just four. Mm, nope. No, it's five. Yeah. Uh, so I highly recommend this. If, if for, you just happen to be a writer um, or you happen to do something where you need to like switch your brain. Uh, I don't know if this is the right term, but code switching applies to language. So maybe it is. Um, and the the brain's changing to, um, like shift the language that you're using when you're around different people, you code switch. Um, I feel like this playlist thing that I've got going on right now is really helping my brain to code switch into the fictional world that I need to shift into. Uh, so I basically like, (laughs) you know, come Tuesday night when it's time for me to code shift, 
code switch back into Darkness Between the Stars, I'm just going to be listening to, while I cook dinner, I'm just going to be listening to the Darkness Between the Stars playlist. And that, like, immediately shoves me back into Tarset's head and her world and her situation that she's going on right now. So, um... Yeah, I guess that that would be a tip if you are looking for that. Um, And that, let me, like, addendum here. I cannot listen to music while I'm writing. I cannot do it. Um, So I don't listen to the songs while I'm writing. They do not help me with that. They would hinder me greatly. But I do listen to it um, when I'm doing other stuff. And it helps me to brainstorm. I listen to it when I shower. That's one of my best brainstorming places. I listen to my fiction playlists when I'm driving and when I'm walking those are my three best brainstorming um times so um I'm not doing a very good job at keeping this short and I still have to edit this tonight uh (laughs) uh, I do have some fun research links uh that I wanted to share with you from this week so I have an old English a video of a man speaking old English which applies to a scene in Darkness Between the Stars between Tarset and Atum. Um, the video is very entertaining. I recommend you watch it on YouTube if you're curious about what Old English sounds like, which is not like English. <laughs> um, kind of like Scots, um, kind of like German, somewhere in there. Uh, I also included a link for for an article called The Heartbreak Key from the Rolling from Rolling Stone. Um, and uh, this was also part of Darkness Between the Star Research. Um, and the, apparently this is like kind of a controversial issue, but I wanted to figure out what the saddest, what was genuinely, generally accepted as the saddest key um, that songs can be written in. So uh, apparently D minor is the consensus. Uh, however, there are some people who say that that is complete BS. So I'll let you decide. Um, but that was an interesting article. And then also for the last vampire queen, uh, I've been researching some Gothic mansions and like Gothic nouveau or whatever the actual term is, but like Gothic revival, I think is the term, um, architecture and definitely look up to temple place, uh, and look at the images, especially of the interior. It's stunning. So, um, but yeah, also just <laughs> just Google Gothic mansions. And you, you can just drool over architecture for a little while. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, my big goals. Uh, again, I deleted my goals from last week, but I did meet them all, I'm pretty sure. So other than finishing, so I wrote my five chapters of Darkness Between the Stars, and I, um, oh, which I did not give you an update on. So, uh, I am, I've written 10 chapters, and the manuscript is currently at 19.4 thousand words, so almost 19 and a half thousand words. It's actually a little bit more than that, because I didn't count what I've written of chapter 11, which I wrote the beginning of already, so let's say 19 and a half, um, thousand words, 19.5 thousand words. Um, yeah, and we are, we have entered essentially uh, act two, act the very, very beginning. We're at the turning point, the break into two um, at that point. So um, I need to, my big goals for this week are to write, post, write and post The Last Vampire Queen season one, episode seven, and the patron's choice story, which is Haru's point of view of when he first meets Lex when she arrives in ancient Egypt in Time Anomaly. So those are going to be really fun. I'm really excited to, um, I'm really excited to share season, uh, season one, episode seven of The Last Vampire Queen with patrons. Um, I really like it. <laughs> and then I'm really excited just to write the patron's choice story. So I know I'm going to be excited to share that one. Um, so those are coming out on November 1st. Uh, and then, and the link to the Patreon is in the show notes and the link, um, there's a link to like the, um, the like index post that has all of the stories that are available. And it also includes, um, stories that are marked as public that you can read without being a patron. So there are like the first episode of the last vampire queen. You can read, um, the first episode of, I think the first episode, 
maybe no just the first episode of the last vampire queen and the first episode of there's a censored version of the first episode of uh all world online looking glass because it got a little bit racy at the end um so you can read both of those and i think there's a couple other things that you can read for free um to see if you're interested in subscribing um okay so um what else am i what are my other big goals for this week i need to write just three episodes or three chapters of darkness between the stars because I'm not actually starting to write that until Wednesday because I will be finishing up Patreon stuff on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and I'm currently on a one chapter a day goal, um, unless I fall behind and then I'll have to add more stuff. Um, so, uh, and then the world after cover reveal, which should be live when you are hearing this or shortly after. So not if it's like super early, I still have to like take the pictures and record the posts and stuff so but that will be on halloween tomorrow slash today whenever you are watching slash hearing this um what am i looking forward to writing all the fun things this week i get to write so many different fun things and then i think that's what i'm really really loving so much about um all of the ser- the serial fiction that i'm writing um and why i am so drawn towards leaning into th- writing the serials um and writing books at in serial format first um, is because I get to kind of like hop around and get excited. I, there's for, you know variety is the spice of life or whatever. Um, it's exciting to change the stories. Like sometimes when I get into the like deep into a manuscript, like there is definitely some like snowball momentum that happens. But also there's like a slog that happens where it's just like oh my god this is terrible the story is terrible I hate it. I'm never going to write anything again. This is the worst thing I've ever written. There's just like all of the self-doubt stuff just starts to talk to my brain. (laughs) My brain talks to itself. Um, And this, this method or this like serialization process seems to avoid it. Like I am still so excited about The Last Vampire Queen and I am near the end of when it's going to be like where it's going to be for the end of a book. There's probably two to three more episodes. So seven, eight, nine. So it might, it's like going to be nine or 10 episodes, I think for season one. So book one. Um, and I'm so, I'm like more excited than ever. I think like I've had so many like, like inspiration muse strikes the last few days about where, where that story is going both for the end of season one and also for season two and some other reveals that are going to happen later. So I think that something that's really special and that I'm really enjoying about the serialization process and switching between projects to do an episode at a time and just alternating is that it gives my brain some time to like marinate in the background on the story or for the story to marinate in the background um, of my mind and to come up with the coolest, best, most interesting and exciting options for what can happen next to the characters and the plot and the world building and all of the good, fun, juicy stuff. Um, so I don't know. I really enjoy it. I definitely think, um, I mean, serialization is definitely the the way that I'm leaning towards. It's not going to change anything in terms of like what readers get to see on the book end of things on the back end, like by the back end, I guess forward facing end is, is more of an appropriate term, but like books will get published as normal. They'll get edited. They'll get proofread you know, they'll go on all the platforms, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, all the places, they'll become audiobooks. But before that, they'll be available to my patrons on Patreon. And I'm really excited about that. I get a huge like rush from the feedback from patrons and how excited they are about reading the stories right after I write them, like right when I am so excited about the story itself, not three, four, five months later after I've like already moved on from that story. Like by the time it's gone through copy edits and proofreading, like I am out of it, like, mm -mm. and I'm passionate about something else. But now I get to share the thing that I'm passionate about, like right now, that is like my current obsession. I get to share it immediately. And so for me, that is really special. And I'm really, I mean, obviously I'm getting super excited right now, just as I'm talking about it. So 
If you haven't already checked out my Patreon, definitely do. I'm only going to be adding more stuff to it as time goes on. And eventually you will be able to read every single thing that I am writing as I am writing it. And you won't even need to wait until it goes through all of the back end processing behind the scenes processing of copy edits and revisions and all of that stuff. If you want to know what's going to happen in the story next, that is the way to do it. And I think last week I announced that I have a new tier on Patreon, which is for uh, this tier three. The subscribers to that tier are currently reading Darkness Between the Stars. Like they have read all 10 chapters that I've written. So if that sounds like something that's fun to you, maybe check that out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess that's it for me this week. That was kind of a lot. I said I wanted to keep this short, and I did the opposite. So I need to go. I hope you have a great week. I will chat with you on Sunday. Until then, happy reading. <laughs> <laughs>